Hello friends, good evening to all of you. So I am back with another video on sociology optional subject for you pay CC means examination and this video we are going to see the techniques of data collection a subsection under research method analysis. So friend please do this yes it will really motivate me to conduct this awesome course share as much as possible so that more and more people will get benefited. Comment and like the video and ask any doubt if you have and hit the subscription button below the video and now you can also follow us on FB page that is facebook.com slash unorthodox academy. So friend as you already know that we are covering slot to autonomous topics we have already covered these topics of paper 2 and in paper 1 we have finished sociology discipline and sociology of science and at present we are at research method analysis and its subsection that is techniques of data collection. So basically the reliable data is of supreme significance to establish sociology as a science and as you know that whenever we establish a theory in sociology or whenever there is a need of making theory in the sociology so then there is a very important need or very important use of reliable data to establish is that its, its objectivity and value neutrality and needless to say recent decades have seen much use of statistical and other informations which are collected through various techniques which have their relative advantages and limitations Interview of the interview observations and questionnaires are some of the such data collection techniques. So collection of quantitative data is one of the way of collecting necessary evidence for reaching clear and sound decisions. This implies that statistical work must be directed towards actual or potential problems or for testing hypotheses and theories. Data have no standing in themselves. They have a basis for existence only when there is a problem. Thus, statics not only really concerned with gathering of numerical information in the hope that it may be useful to solve the problems. So now statistics deals with the quantitative data. It should be clearly understood that for the purpose of interpretations, poly form, policy formulations and actions, Merely analysis of quantitative data may not be enough. They may need to be supplemented by historical data and descriptive data or knowledge gained through non-quantitative sources. So at present times the theories that are making in the sociology will be used both types of data that is quantitative and qualitative data. So basically in techniques of data collections, the techniques are divided into two types that is primary source and secondary source. And in this video we are going to cover only primary source and then the part two of this video we will cover secondary sources. So in primary sources we have generally basically three types of techniques that is observations, interview and questionnaires. And these are further divided as the observations are of two types. The first one is participant observations and the second one is non-participant observations or it is also known as quasi-participant. Then in interview we have also a two type that is structured and unstructured types of interview. And in questionnaires we have also two types of questions that is open-ended questionnaires and the close-ended questionnaires. And in second resources we have two types of resources that is personal and the formal and personal we have autobiography, diary and letters and in formal we have records, reports, newspapers and speeches. So now we see the further primary resources. The first one is observations. So basically first we see the primary sources of data collection and the first one is observations or basically participant and quasi participant that means non participant observations so basically the research method of stu studying intensively a small society collectively over a period of time by joining it and participating in its activities is also known as ethnography or the field research it is typically used in the study of small communities, gangs and total institutions, informal groups and other small scale settings. So before moving further, I will discuss you the meaning of primary sources and the secondary sources. So basically, the primary sources of data collections are the method which is used by sociologists by themselves or in this they collect the data by themselves. So that's why it is known as primary source of data collection and the secondary source of data collections. The secondary data are basically 
make through the use of primary resources or taking inference from the primary sources or the data which is already available, available through the primary sources of data collections that is used made by the another sociologist so in the secondary data collections we have been basically infer from the different sources of data so the research techniques employed include informal interviewing of participants and of informants selected individuals who provide detailed interpretations of the setting being observed participations of the researcher in the activities being studied and observations of key events in the life of collectivity in participant observation the investigator might disguise himself as a member of the group that he poses to observer so basically niels anderson disguised himself as a hobo to observe the social behavior of hobo a tribe some writers regard nel nels anderson's study as the best example of participant and quasi participant observations he spent almost 2 to 3 years studying the life of hobos to and be they on road in the jungle and lodging house and in chicago's hobo college so basically at the time the investigator adopts a role which makes him acceptable to the group without revealing his real purpose he may join a group claiming himself to be a social historian or a botanist so basically the degree of participation however depends on the nature of his study and the practical demands of the situations in certain cases there is a compelling necessity for the participant observation since the object is novel or basically new so novel means new on the other hand a familiar object does not need such an observation So this tool however has certain disadvantage in the field research as the investigator becomes a participant his own range of experience shrink he is likely to occupy a particular positions within the group and with a definite circle of friends observing from this circle of friends he misses what the fringe individuals are doing or basically the mainstream meaning of the individuals or the mainstream what the individuals do so basically in participant observation it is also possibly that the researcher or the sociologist may emotionally attach to the group and it will reflects the objectivity and value neutrality of the research theory or the techniques of data collections that is participant data collection since participant observation is is a difficult process there is a need for non participant observations this sort of a technique is adopted by the anthropologist nonetheless pure or non participant observation is difficult since such situations can be become uncomfortable a sociologist can not be become a drug addict to study the narcotic smugglers neither he can join a juvenile gang or a spiritualist sect yet he can take part in great many activities of the group in order to avoid the walk awkwardness of total non participation basically if he joins a group of uh smugglers it might be or he that takers of the alcohols so it may it is not necessary for him to take alcohol so for being a part of that group he can takes other spices or the snacks that they use so by this they can or basically researcher or sociologist can remove the awkwardness of total non participation So Lee Play used this method a century ago in the study of European working class family the lens in their study of middle town so basically non participant observation is then usually co- also called as quasi participant observations so now we see the interviews so basically interviews are some one of the most widely used methods of gathering data in sociology they consist of the researcher asking the interview or respondent a series of questions Interviews can be classified as structured or unstructured though many fall somewhere between these two extremes because these are two extremes so it might be possible there is also a mix up of that or that both structured and unstructured will be present and in a, in a structured interview the wording of the questions and the order in which they are asked remains the same in every case so the result is fairly formal questions and the answer session and in unstructured interviews are more likely an informal conversation 
So the interviewer usually has particular topics in mind to cover but few if any previously formed questions. He has the freedom to phrase questions as he likes and asks the respondent to develop his answers and probe responses which might be unclear and ambiguous. So basically this freedom is often extended to the respondent who may be allowed to direct the interview into areas which interest him. In general, the structure in the interviews are regarded as appropriate for obtaining answers to the questions of fact such as age, sex and job of the respondent. So these are called basically structured interviews and in unstructured interviews are basically more seen as more appropriate for eliciting attitudes and opinions of the respondent. So various studies have suggested that interviews pose serious problem of reliability and validity. So this is partly due to the fact that interviews are interaction situations. Thus the result of an interview will depend in a part on the way the participant define the situations, their perceptions of each other and so on. So basically interviewers like everybody else have values, attitudes and expectations. So however much the interviewer tries to disguise his views, they may be well communicated to the respondents and this is particularly likely on the more informal situations of the unstructured interviews. As a, as a result, the interviewer may lead the respondent whose answer will then be reflect something of the interviewer's attitude and expectations. To counter this problem, interviewers are often advised to be non-directive to refrain from offering opinions to avoid, avoid expressions of approval and disapproval. So that's why it is suggested that they establish rapport with their respondent that is a warm friendly relationship which implies sympathy and understanding but at the same time also guard against communicating their own attitudes and expectations because if their attitudes and expressions will be reflected on the respondent answer so it will increase or basically it will decrease the value neutrality or the objectivity of the theory. So now we see the third part that is questionnaire. So basically a questionnaire consists of a list of preset questions to which respondent are asked to supply answers. So researchers who use questionnaires regard, regard themselves as a comparatively or this method as completely cheap, fast and efficient method for obtaining large amount of quantifiable data on relatively large number of people. So basically questions usually falls into the following categories or basically two categories. The first questions may be open-ended. For example, this firm has an exceptionally good industrial relations record. Why do you think this is so? Basically this is an open-ended questions which allow the respondent to compose his own answers rather than choosing between a number of given answers by the researcher. A second type of questions sometimes known as closed or the fixed choice questions and these are closed ended questions. So it requires a choice between a number of given answers like yes, no or doubtful and etc. So in this the respondent will be or is going to give answers in a fixed manner. Now questionnaires provide data which can be easily quantified. They are largely designed for this purpose. The questionnaires is one of the main tools of measurement in positivist sociology. Now basically these methods of questionnaires and interview however have a very limited role in understanding the sociology of India. Regarding certain matters the villagers are rightly secretive about their own economic position as well as their personal life. The uh, down trailer would be very reluctant to reveal his caste. Uh, another difficulty in making use of this tool in India is the lit illiteracy of the rural people. Coupled with this, the men who are sent out of the interview and the men who prepare the questionnaires cannot even communicate with the rural people. The dialect, the medium and the inflections that are used when a villager speaks vary from district to district and at time from one cluster of village to another. So underlying these difficulties there is one more hurdle. The language of measurement and the quantification is generally not known to villagers. So when villager is que queried about his material possessions, he would simply say all is well and when he asks about the number of his children, he would reply it was all the kindness of God as we see in the rural society of India. 
such being the situations in rural India, the tools of social anthropologists would be more relevant. Live amidst the people speak and speak their language, develop an empathy for the people and understand their legends, myths and traditions that go into the making the village social structure. So thank you guys for listening and watching this video. Please do these things. Thank you.